Interest in President Kennedy's proposed Peace Corps continues to rise among American youth. Here are the forerunners of the Peace Corps. American exchange students, now overseas in backward and depressed areas of the world. I've gotten a lot more than water out of this well. I've made hundreds of friends for America. I decided I needed a change of scenery. So I said goodbye to Wall Street for a couple of years and got a job in Africa. That our mission and goals haven't changed in nearly 60 years is rare. March 15th, 2020. Dear volunteers, we recently evacuated volunteers from China due to the COVID-19 outbreak. It is against this backdrop that I have made the difficult decision to temporarily suspend all Peace Corps operations globally and evacuate all of our volunteers. These evacuations represent the temporary suspension of volunteer activities. We are not closing posts and we will be ready to return to normal operations when conditions permit. What is baffling to me is that people would be like, all right, Peace Corps, we're ready to go back. It's like, look around you. I loved my experience in Peace Corps, but not because I helped. Not because I helped, but because I learned so much. Because I learned from everybody who took the time to teach me. Peace Corps is very selective of what they choose to show of what they allow to exist within the frame of any video that they send out to the world. So I was an agriculture volunteer, but a lot of what I did in Peace Corps was media work. For half a year, I was the one running the Peace Corps of the Gambia social media page. I was the one curating this single story for at least one post. This film is an attempt to be transparent. That tries to expand the frame of Peace Corps past the single story that they have crafted through their many years of existence. Because yeah, Peace Corps volunteers for decades have been talking about their depression, their isolation, ways in, in which they think Peace Corps should reform, white saviorism. These conversations are happening, but they're not going anywhere. They stay within the community. So sound rolling? Mm -hmm. Camera? Cool. So this is going to be an uh, interview with Liz, take one. Personally, at that time, what were, your, what were your motivations for joining Peace Corps? It was in 1993, probably before you were born, and it was the war in Bosnia. I remember watching it on the news. I was appalled by what I saw, but I wanted to do something, and I wasn't going to join the Army, so I joined the Peace Corps. I am a social worker by training. I've always just wanted to help people. And it was about a year or so after I graduated from grad school, I was realizing I did not know what I wanted to do. I did know that I was always really into health. So I figured I'm in my 20s, I have the time and the energy now, let me just bite the bullet, especially since I don't know what I wanna do with my career. Well, you know, life might be different when you were in the Peace Corps, but when I was a volunteer was because some of the guys were joining the Peace Corps because they could continue to get uh, exemption from military service. So it was kind of a touchy question. And I don't think it really matters why you went there. I think what matters is what you're gonna get out of being there. And that's very personal, what you get out of it. Applying was interesting. I had, I had I reached out to like a friend, uh, she did a Peace Corps in Fiji. And she, she kind of talked me through how like, you know, you could really, just look for things online and, and to kind of have like the right way to phrase things. And it's honestly like you, you, if you study how to actually apply to get into Peace Corps, you could do it. Peace Corps a lot of times is based on a lot of trust of the volunteer. Like we're sending you to this village. There's not the most monitoring. Like for you, like they never came to your village. And if there's that level of trust, it's very important who you're bringing in. I think recruitment is really important. I think they did a few years ago sort of make it easier to get in. They wanted the numbers to be bigger and have more applicants. And 
Um, it was made it easier to apply. I think the application went from six hours to one hour, and that was intentional. Applying to serve overseas in the Peace Corps is easier than ever before. The application will take you about one hour to complete. Once you apply, you choose where you want to live and what you want to do for the next two years. We'll match your skills with our projects. For your sector or the work that you are doing, uh, how much prior experience did you have? I would say probably little to no. Zero. <laughs> none. I had uh, none. I, and, and nor did the volunteers 10 years later that I placed in very similar jobs. I had been teaching before, but generally in like smaller bursts or like one class. I never been like a day in, day out like teacher. The weird thing of like having to do teacher trainings, that was always kind of strange to me. Um, like who am I to tell these like 40 something, 30 something, um, or people who have been in their career for a long time, like how to teach. One of the reasons I chose to do teaching was because there really weren't any qualifications that you had to have, which is perhaps telling and problematic. I had a little bit of, of teaching experience. I like tutored in college, but honestly, I when I, I decided I wanted to do Peace Corps and then was looking at postings and it was sort of process of elimination, like, well, I can't do that, I'm not qualified for health or agriculture, so I guess I'm gonna be a teacher. As a director, that came up all the time. Did we want people who would be skilled in a certain job, or did we want AB generalists, is what they called them then. So we brought in nutritionists, because we thought that's what would work, and we brought in AB generalists. Uh, the nutritionists did not work out as well, because they needed equipment and, uh, to match their skills. Uh, AB generalists didn't know about this equipment, so they try to learn what would make sense to do. Like as an AB generalist in a lot of ways, I was gonna teach, be essentially gonna like try to educate and do trainings and teach uh, farmers and gardeners who have been doing this their whole lives, and I've never done this. So how did you start out? Based on like talking with people in my village that to focus on trees. Um, because be they suggested it. So my point is you went to them to find out what to do. And so do you, did you notice with the, with the specialists that a lot of times they, they were less willing to go to the... Of course. Okay. I know everything there is to know about this. That's why you brought me here. If you've got a good head, an open mind, and a big heart, find out more about joining the Peace Corps. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. The toughest job you'll ever love. The toughest job you'll ever love. When I came back to America briefly um, in 2017, um, I spoke at a, an event and someone they had asked, like, you know, how was your experience, like, post-grad? And I talked <laughs> a lot about loneliness and how, like, you know, I was, you're very lonely in Peace Corps. The isolation of being in the village, missing my family, all of that, on top of having safety and security issues in my village, I, I would be in bed for, like, days. And unfortunately, the mental health services that Peace Corps volunteers are privy to, it's very much lacking. Yeah, it's pretty much not there. Regardless of intention, do you believe there is a culture of Peace Corps gaslighting volunteers? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, let me think about it. I'm not surprised by the question. I think that's what makes me laugh. It's like when someone's like going through something and like you just tell them like, oh, you're so strong. It's like, that doesn't help. I gotta be strong. <laughs> There's no other choice. Um, but yeah, like I feel like that's something that definitely happens a lot. But I will say that volunteers would come to you with problems and you just think to yourself, well, what did you think was gonna happen when you came here, you know? It wasn't a good thing to say that to somebody. And sometimes the best thing I did was not to say anything at all, just to say, what's the problem, and let them tell me what the problem was. My own feeling was, if I did my job really well, you wouldn't need me. And you would say to yourself, what did they do in that office anyway? And that, to me, was a sign of a good, a good Peace Corps staff.
what they do for one volunteer, they're going to have to do for all of them. So there's they're cautious in making any kind of imposition in, in their service, and they do want them to figure it out. I reached out for mental health support. It had been like days of just really, like I was depressed and I really needed help. I called crying at Jack's house, actually, and was like, I really am struggling and I really need somebody to talk to. I need some help. I'm really sad. My friends are worried about me. And he said, well, Nicole, everybody is sad. <laughs> and kind of like hung up the phone. If we have three medical professionals, why do none of them have any sort of specialization or even general knowledge on mental health? And then at the very end, we had to do our medical clearances before we could go home. And I remember him sitting down with me and saying, Nicole, you have lost your sparkle. And I was like, yeah. The toughest job you'll ever love. So I printed out some uh, Reddit comments. <laughs> oh, lovely. You're just going to reach and pull one, open it up, read it out loud. After you read it out loud, I'm going to take it back from you. OK. And then I just want you to respond to okay. whatever might. It's like charades. You want to you pick or yeah, I'll just do it. Let's see. OK. There's a belief that all U.S. soft power is imperialism. Yes, the reason Peace Corps exists is to positively represent the United States and expand our influence abroad, but it's also completely based on the consent of the countries we're going to, and we are offering services local governments find appropriate. It's not neocolonialism. We aren't extracting anything. It's symbiotic diplomacy. Well, I respectfully disagree. <laughs> How are you, as one individual, with your one Peace Corps experience, going to make a blanket statement and say that Peace Corps is good for people? That within itself is an example of American exceptionalism. Because you are an American are telling these presumably black and brown people what's good for them. <laughs> no. It's just wrong on a lot of things. Yeah, especially the end, just like and they lost putting, a, the end. putting a period on it. It's not neocolonialism. Because while we aren't extracting anything, we are very much still promoting American ideals, American capitalism, and just general Americanness. I mean, you look at not just U.S. foreign aid, but China going in. I mean, there, there's a reason they're building bridges and roads all over Africa. Um, it's not because they're nice, um, which they might be, but for the same reason we do foreign aid, it's to have a say, to have a seat at the table. Um, so. I'm treating it as a paid internship and language training because I want to work with youth back home and like you didn't have the experience for a job that would pay me or the money to support myself on my own. I am not taking anyone's position and at worst I will have a completely neutral impact. Basically, don't be a colonizer and you'll be okay. I mean, if we're talking about intentions, that's not really like the best as if acting like the population that you're working with is just kind of like a trial run. The average volunteer is fresh out of college and we're going in and telling these volunteers that don't even have a fully functioning brain yet that they're able to teach this huge community about this particular thing. Would I have been able to get the job I got in Peace Corps here? No. No, no. I mean, so there's like no, the, there's no the, denying the fact that obviously it looks great um, in terms of experience and, yeah. and, and, and like just like work What if history. I'm not qualified here to do it, should I be qualified there to do it? <laughs> no. <sighs> you know, it's the dirty secret of Peace Corps that it's the volunteer that benefits the most from the transformative experience. From my perspective, I always felt I got more out of it than I gave. So I have to paint the scene for you. So when the military flight would spend the night, one of the commerçants would have a, a big party for them. I saw this man come in, and I thought to myself, well, this really is the most beautiful man I've ever seen in my life. At the end of the evening, he asked if he could walk me home. And at one point, he said to me, I think that you're here for very good reasons from your perspective, but..." I don't think it's good that you're here because we need to learn. And if you do things for us, then we won't learn. And, and maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you want to do something different. But just the idea that you're here 
and have come to help us um, could put you in that position where we don't develop, you develop. It's the age-old question is uh, philanthropy, altruism, does it truly exist? Development is inherently problematic and one of the things that Peace Corps has going for it is the volunteers by design are there for long enough to like develop more cultural awareness. There was one time where I was trying to get somewhere and I was having trouble getting there and I ended up getting picked up on the side of the road um, by a car full of American NGO workers. And when we got to where we were going, I, I had a conversation with a Rwandan in Kenya, Rwanda, and the um, Americans were shocked that I could speak Kenya, Rwanda. And I had learned that some of them had been there for like five or 10 years and couldn't speak a word of Kenya, Rwanda because they lived in a compound and their driver took them around and they were development workers, like this was their job. That's what Peace Corps is, going out there and living with people, you know, as they do for a long period of time, eating what they eat, sleeping where they sleep, really becoming part of the community. You make very, very strong personal connections with the people in your community, which is great. So that is something that I guess the community does have. If we possibly reframe Peace Corps, into more of like a cultural exchange situation as, as opposed to us going in and teaching them, I think the, cost, the benefit for the community will be much greater. But let's be clear, the Peace Corps, just like USAID, is a tool of the US government and pretending otherwise is folly. That being said, the Peace Corps does some good, it does some bad, but ultimately the measure of its value is in the experience of its volunteers past present and future. It is not a development organization. So I don't agree with that <laughs> at all. I want to hear your thoughts. Look, when I was an aid director, I had multi-million dollar projects. Who knows, maybe they have multi-billion dollar projects now. So I could come in and I could say, I'm going to give you $15 million to reform your health system. But when I taught mothers how to feed their babies in a way that would make them grow faster, healthier, whatever. I was also doing development. What's a more important impact or intent? Wait, come on. Take seven. Can you say that again? So, like, <laughs> so one of the things that we were talking about, like I remember in one of our program like reflection meetings, what is more important, um, impact or intent? And it's something that like you have to think about. These guys have been raising cattle a long time. And when it comes to marketing, they can sure use a little Texas know-how. I took my experience and put it to work in the Peace Corps. The United States Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. And Peace Corps was going to start right now. Would it look the same? I think it would look largely the same, but definitely there are some things they might change. Making sure you like have the right people with the right type of mindset. It's tough because it's like it's supposed to be trained men and women. We got trained for four months on site, like learning as we go. Um, we weren't trained. I don't think there's any stopping the fact that some volunteers will come in with a white savior complex. That's gonna happen. That's just nonprofit. So why not talk about it? And not just talk about it, but resources on how to challenge your own perspective. Like I only did so through my own reading and understanding and also background of already having a teacher with a very decolonized perspective on it all. You feel that you got a lot out of the Peace Corps. I feel I got a lot out of the Peace Corps. One of the reasons I feel I got something out of the Peace Corps was because I spent those years helping other people that fed a need in me to do something for other people. Why isn't this important to people in other countries? Why wouldn't that also happen to them? If the next round of Peace Corps was to see themselves helping to create Peace Corps in the countries that they were in, then you could say, okay, we're gonna send volunteers out to work in health, and there will be an equal number of local volunteers, and they will all work collaboratively. And then they may get the same benefits for their country that we got for ours. I consider Core Africa, which is this organization I founded to give Africans the chance to serve like Peace Corps volunteers, I consider it my Peace Corps project. It took 25 years for it to come together, but it really is building on that experience and you know, a segue too the solutions that I thought uh, needed to happen. I hope Peace Corps lives a long and healthy life. I don't think we need Peace Corps at all. Like, if we got rid of it, 
super dope. But I do think that people are just gonna make Peace Corps stick around for a little bit more. So I do think that there needs to be like a regutting. You rolling everything? Yep. Sweetness. So, speed round. I'm just gonna rattle questions. Let's do it. Yes or no? Okay. Don't worry about try like defending. Just gut reaction. Okay. Do you believe Peace Corps should continue to exist? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Yes for now. Just said yes or no. Sorry, yes. Do you believe Peace Corps is a form of neocolonialism? No. Yes. yes. Do you believe Peace Corps benefits the countries they serve? Yes. Yes. Sometimes. Did you enjoy your service? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Yes. Knowing what you do now, would you still have done it? Yes. yes. Oh my God, yes. I mean, I met my husband there. I decided on my career from there. I went, yes. Do you believe most volunteers are qualified to do what is asked of them? No. No. Most volunteers, what's asked for them? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> Girl, no. Do you believe Peace Corps needs reform? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Peace Corps, at the end of the day, it's good intentions. It's a lot of it is like wanting to do good and it's giving people an opportunity to. The best way to do it would just to refine how we do things. I don't know. I don't know if phasing out Peace Corps is the answer. I wouldn't consider myself anti-Peace Corps, but I'm super critical. We have to be critical. How is it gonna ever gonna be better if we're not critical about it? So I don't know if the answer is to completely abolish it in 20 years. I don't know if we should abandon the ship. I think we have a good ship. I think some parts just need to be swapped out and fixed. And I don't think that's just a Peace Corps thing. I think that's just an America thing.